everyone, Will Terrell here. Welcome to another video. Um, so the last sketching video I did, uh, I tried this new camera setup where I had the two cameras, and uh, it seemed to be it seemed to get a really good response. Um, and the video got a really good response, even though it was like 45 minutes long. <laughs> I'm surprised anybody finished watching it, uh, but I'm glad you guys did, and uh, thank you for all the wonderful comments on it. That It means a lot to me. In this video, I'm doing uh, a quick sketch of a little old lady uh, feeding the birds. <laughs> you might have seen this, the speed sketch video of it. Uh, I really like how it turned out. It's one of my favorite videos. It makes me laugh still. In this video, I'm doing... I'm not actually sketching. See, look, my hands. <laughs> my hands not drawing at this exact moment. Look, I'm gonna. How about this? I'll pretend to sketch. So, <laughs> okay. This video, I'm sketching this little old lady, and I have to say, this is one of my favorite sketches I've done in a while. Like, I've, I made this video of me sketching this little lady probably about two months ago. And I have watched this video so many times before I even posted it for anybody else to see. Uh, and it cracks me up. Like, I don't know. I just like the way she looks. And you'll see at the beginning of this video, uh, I actually... Uh, I didn't know what I wanted her to look like. And if you ever get stuck on a drawing or you're like just not sure what to draw, just draw a blob. You know, and I do that. Sometimes I'll fill up a whole page of just random blobs, and I'll turn them into either a face or or a body or something. Uh, and you'll see me do that. Like with this one, I decided you know I wanted to like change it and I don't, whatever. You get the idea. Uh, so if you're ever stuck on a drawing, that's a good way to like break out of it. I wanted to talk about something in this video. Uh, I want to talk about a secret technique you can use to instantly make your work a hundred times more enjoyable to your viewers, to your, you know, whoever it is that sees your artwork, your appreciators, <laughs> or whoever. So this is my secret trick to instantly make people like your work more without even having to get better at drawing. It will make your, your work a hundred times more likely to get people interested in your stuff than anything else you could possibly do. It's a secret, and you're going to like it, okay? And the secret is, tell stories with your drawings. Don't just do a picture of somebody standing there, or flexing, <laughs> or screaming, or... Yeah, don't just do a picture of people posing. Have them doing something. Tell a story. It's so much more engaging when, like, you can look at something and you're you're trying you. It speaks to your audience, uh, and I'll be honest, I'm still learning this myself. Like, this drawing is a good example of me deciding I'm going to do a sketch that tells a story. I'm not just going to sketch, uh, and sometimes I forget that, and I'll draw boring sketches that look pretty, but it's that's sort of like candy or fast food, like. People look at it and they're like, oh, okay, yeah. But they forget about it the moment they they absorbed it. You know, it, it just, it's not satisfying. It's like a, they just pop in their mouth and it's gone. Where if you tell, if you do a drawing that tells a story, it sticks with people for a long time. You know, like this video is a good example. Uh, if you look back at some of my older videos, um, some of the drawings, were good drawings, but they didn't tell a story, and people just don't respond to them the same way. But with this one, it's funny. It makes people laugh, so they'll come back to it, you know, and um, comment on it or whatever. Um, but, and I'll, I'll tell you where I, I mean, I, this whole last year for me has been really like absorbing this lesson, um, and where it really, really hit home was. Um, I went to CTN Animation Expo with my friend Brandon Green that I go sketch with, and um, his uh, one of his old mentors happens to be a director, a feature film director at Disney Feature Animation, 
And we had the amazing privilege of getting to get a behind-the-scenes tour of uh, Disney feature animation, which blew my mind. Like, I was just excited to be in California again and excited to hang out with other artists. But to tour Disney... Ah! So, that was really loud. Sorry. Uh, but Brandon is a really good artist. Like, he should be working for Disney or somebody like that. He's that good. Uh, and I thought that he was going to... Uh, show his portfolio to his former mentor and the mentor is going to be like, mm, this is perfect, you're hired. <laughs> um, but what happened was he showed him his portfolio and he like flipped through like 80% of it and really great drawings, really beautiful rendered drawings, uh, good designs even. And the only ones that he stopped at and noticed were the ones that told the story. And I had the same experience all weekend with my portfolio, too. People would just, like, glaze over 90% of what's in there except for the ones that told the story. And they would stop and point that out it, it, instinctively. It's not something that, like, they're trained to do necessarily. It's a human reaction. They're, we react to things that speak to us. Uh, everything else is just, uh, it's like a tree in the background or, you know... Uh, the color of paint on the wall. It doesn't tell a story. Uh, and that's that's the problem that a lot of people have when they do sketches. And um, so I'm learning to do that. I'm trying to be more conscious about it. And all it does, it takes an extra minute or two of, you know, before you start sketching something, you say, you, you say, what is the story here? And you just take a second to, like, just think it through. And once you've got the story, you can knock it out real quick. And it doesn't have to be a big story. You know, it could be, you know, if you're drawing people in a cafe, just draw two people interacting or one person interacting with, you know, with something, something unique, especially to that situation. And you should be looking for that anyways in everyday life is is things that, that speak to you, you know. Uh, there's a reason why you're drawn to, so to speak, <laughs> drawing a certain personality type. You know, because it speaks to you. Uh, well, you need to communi that, communicate that to your audience. And to drive that point home, um, I used to do caricatures at SeaWorld, California, in San Diego, and uh, Legoland, California. <laughs> and even before that, I used to do caricatures at, like, the county fair here in Texas, and the flea market, and, you know, restaurants, and... You know, everywhere, you know, and I, I make really good money with it. Uh, it's a pretty good income. Uh, and I learned a really important lesson when I was in California. Because um, with with a caricature company, they'll hire people that barely know how to draw. And they'll just toss them out there like, oh, go learn. You know, really, that's the best way to learn. That's how I learned. You know, I, I uh, people didn't really want to buy my characters when I first started. But... I learned a really important lesson because of all of that. When people go, especially to a theme park, they're not just going to buy a caricature. They're buying the experience. They're buying the experience of you being, putting them on center stage. And you're there, like, giving them all of your attention for five to ten minutes. And uh, I, when I was in California, I had a, a really good friend named uh, Gabe who is he is like the best salesman I have ever met in my entire life. He's just fantastic at telling stories and upselling people and like everything he says is just hilarious. Uh, and he broke so many park records from, you know, sales records and whatever uh, at all the parks. Uh, he's just a fantastic salesman and entertainer, more importantly. Uh, and I learned a lot from watching him work because uh, he really knew, like, it, the drawing, a good drawing helps. You know, it really helps with people not returning it. <laughs> not going to the next booth and saying, this drawing sucks, can you redo it for me? You know, you don't want that. But the drawing only goes so far. Like, what they're really buying is the experience. So when you put them down at center stage, you're, you give them all your attention and you like are enthusiastic and entertaining and you're giving them an experience and then the caricature is just a souvenir they take away to remember the experience. 
And I really got that with uh, when I was doing caricatures at restaurants. I would just work on tips and stuff. And I was there not to do a great drawing. I would attempt to do a great drawing, but it really didn't matter what the drawing looked like. What mattered was the experience that I gave them. And that's the, the story that they're going to tell people down the road. You know, like, they, they put it up on the wall, and they're like, yeah, that guy was so crazy. I remember, like, you know, he, he told this crazy story about how the shark ate his hand, <laughs> you know, or something. Um, yeah. And and same thing with, with being a, a painter or an illustrator. Like, when I sell paintings or drawings in galleries and stuff, um, I've, I've learned... I learned a long time ago that people, they're not necessarily buying your paintings. Because I know some artists that are way better painters than I am. Way better illustrators than I am. But they don't have a good story. They're, either they're just too shy and they don't talk about themselves at all. Or they're jerks. <laughs> and people don't want to know more about them. Uh, but pe when people go to buy a painting, they'll pay $1,000 for a painting. They won't even think about it. But they're not just buying the painting, they're buying you. They're buying your story. They want to be able to, like, go, you know, they put it up on their wall, and it's a conversation starter for anybody that comes into their house. Once you get that, you realize you don't have to be a great artist in order to succeed financially with being an artist. You do have to be a great entertainer and a great storyteller in order to do that. And... I'm not talking about being a, a storyboard artist or a, a comic book artist to be a storyteller. I'm talking about just in everyday life. You can communicate what you want to say, you know? Um, so, yeah. But <laughs> this little old lady. <laughs> I say that like in every video. But I just really like little old ladies. They're adorable. <laughs> um I don't know where I got the idea for this, uh, this little old lady with the feeding the, the rats and stuff. Um, but, yeah. So, from now on, what I'm trying to do is every sketch that I do is just spend an extra minute or two thinking about what is the story here. And putting that into my sketches. Even if I'm sketching at a coffee shop, you know, it goes a long way. So, I hope you get the idea, like, that telling a good story with, with your artwork, whatever your artwork is, it's very important to what you do. Um, I, I hope you take that away from this video, from this message. Because uh, I, I know artists that are very, very talented, like, you know, talent, more talented than me, that find themselves very frustrated that people with less talent have more success than them. And a lot of times it's because of this. Their artwork just doesn't communicate the way they think it does. Um, they put a lot of effort into rendering and rendering it really, really well. Um, and even, <laughs> you know, you, you look like a, uh, look at it like a Jackson Pollock painting or something where it's just like paint splatter. Well, they're not just buying the paint splatter, they're buying the story behind it. They're buying the story of the artist. You know, he's he's got the gumption to like just splatter paint on a thing and say and call it art. That's a that's a story right there. That starts a conversation and people value that. You know? So you gotta you gotta let go of like that that it's gotta be it's gotta look perfect in order for people to want to buy it. Making it look perfect, making it look great that should be in there. It should be the, in the equation somewhere, but it shouldn't be the top priority. Top priority should be communicating with your audience. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and, and taking it even further, like sometimes uh, I think people realize they people uh, get frustrated thinking they don't understand where their value comes from. And I'm not talking about just art. I'm talking about in life in general, they, they wonder, like, why would anybody even like me? Why, why would people even love me? You know, like, they, they worry about that sort of stuff. And um, you think about your, your favorite people that you meet in your life, whether it's, like, a cousin or just some person from across the room that you see in school or 
um, that you you always notice that like when you're around them you just feel better. Um, it's not just because they look great, you know. They might look great, but most of the time it's it's how they make people feel. It's the experience that they give people, and so it just like with your artwork, it's not the looks that make people have value. It's <laughs> It's the way they make people feel. And so if you're f frustrated with uh, <laughs> with that in your life, like whether you uh, deserve people's friendship or affection or if you feel like you're not getting enough of it, maybe that's what's lacking is that you're not creating enough value for other people. And I'm not saying, like, because people should be loved no matter what. Like even if they're the meanest, grumpiest, you know, person out there, that person still deserves love. Everybody deserves love. You know, even if they don't want it, you know, even if they fight it, they still deserve to be loved. You know, we all do. But they don't necessarily, just because you're born doesn't mean you, you have value. <laughs> value comes from, you know, creating value for other people, making yourself useful, you know, whether that's just being kind or or smiling or or just listening or you know I don't know I mean everybody has their own gifts um, and just like with your artwork your life should be <laughs> your life should be creating value for other people and then you get that in return <laughs> when you give first you get it back in abundance like more than you can ever handle um, like that got really deep really fast, huh? <laughs> uh, so anyways, I think I'm done with this little old lady sketch. Uh, and I said what I was hoping to say, which is, you know, tell a story. And I guarantee, like, whether you think you're a terrible artist or not, because I know people that draw on stick figures that tell great stories, and I give them money because I really in I value that. You know, if you can entertain me with stick figures... I will pay for it, you know. If you can entertain me with uh, really elaborate drawings, I will pay for that too. Like most people will. It's not about how great it looks. It's about what you do with it. All right. I feel like I'm repeating myself now. So uh, thank you guys f for for watching and subscribing to these videos. Man, I am just overwhelmed. Like especially that last video with the last people sketching video. I got so many comments from people and emails. It's humbling. Uh, I'm thankful that you get a lot out of this and I'm thankful um, I can share this with y'all and I said y'all. <laughs> That's right. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, and if you like this one, go, sh go ahead and share it with some people and uh, keep smiling. This shirt is so green. I could like green screen the video onto my shirt. <laughs> All right, anyways, let's get serious. Cartooning, there's no room for jokes.